Good morning, guys. It is Saturday. We all made it. So I have got a great little video for you this morning, and it's going to be short, but it's an important one. It's I've got some notes, a few, because I want it to be accurate, but um, it isn't going to be too long. So first of all, it's about anxiety and how it's a huge limiting factor for a lot of us in different ways. Sometimes it's small. Sometimes it's huge anxiety. I recommend if you suffer from ongoing chronic huge anxiety that's really limiting your ability to complete your day-to-day -day tasks that you skip right by my video and just get into some counseling and get some help and go to a doctor. I am a registered nurse so I do talk a lot about medications and stuff that help with that sort of thing but there's a lot of therapies for these things like CBT. Um, there's all sorts of different communication therapies and therapies that'll help with your anxiety, that'll address trauma and all sorts of stuff. There's DBT and things like that, that will address the root of the anxiety and help you kick its butt and like get out there and live your life without feeling this threat all the time because anxiety is always feeling like you're under threat and you're in danger and our body's meant to keep us safe. So when you feel anxiety, our natural default is to not step forward in life, not take chances, not move forward, not progress, not do anything, not to grow, to just stand still because it feel our bodies feel, our brains feel like we're in danger and we're under threat and it's trying to keep us safe. So I'm going to start with that. Secondly, anxiety is just one, one maladaptive, maladaptive thought process. So I'm going to read you the definition of what maladaptive thought processes are that I'm going to give you like the, the, the Google search quick answer that you would get if you searched it up on Google. So a maladaptive thought process is a pattern of thinking that contributes to negative emotions and behaviors. These patterns are often irrational, distorted, unhelpful, hindering one's ability to cope with challenges or negative life effectively. Or yeah, na yeah, navigate life, sorry, navigate what navigate life effectively. Examples include catastro cat catastrophizing, black and white thinking, overgeneralization, and there's therapies for this like CBT, as I already mentioned, stuff like that. Okay, so anxiety is one example of a maladaptive thought process. And you learn this in psychology and you'll learn it. It's a very maladaptive thought processes. There's tons of them with people. Um, you'll you'll experience it and you'll see it in other people, thought processes that they have. And they and you'll see how it negatively influences decisions they make and actions they take and you'll see it and recognize it but it's very hard for someone to see it in themselves unless you do a lot of self-reflection a lot of shadow work but if you have anxiety you don't need to do shadow work reflection you know it because you know what that feels like in the pit of your stomach you know what that feels like when you feel like you can't breathe or you feel like you just don't want to get out of bed or you don't want to get dressed because you you don't want to open a bill because you don't want to see what's inside or you don't want to answer your phone because you're afraid of who's calling like those are examples of anxiety okay those are severe examples severe examples of anxiety where i think that counseling is most beneficial but we have small levels of anxiety every day. I get anxiety when it comes to opening bills and mail. Not that I can't pay them. I don't know why. I just, there's something about it. There perhaps must have been, and there would, there would have been 100% times in my life where money was super duper tight. When I was a student, I was a single mom with a couple young kids, and I would have anxiety over opening bills, even though I knew I had a budget, I was structured, I was prepared to pay them, but still just the sight of it caused me anxiety. So I think to this day, that's something that I carry with me. So I have to make it a point that every morning when I get up, I open every bit of mail I have. And I, I've made a video about this before previously, and I've accomplished this and overcome this by, I will, even if I'm not paying this bill today because it's not the due date, I will write it down, write when it's due, write the amount, write what it's for, and I always check and make sure my bills are correct, by the way, just because they make mistakes. But then in my mind, I feel like I've done something about it, and that anxiety over that bill is gone. I don't feel the stress of knowing that piece of paper sitting on my desk waiting for me in that envelope, even though, like, it shouldn't be a form of anxiety. Like, I budget for these things, or else I wouldn't have that bill. Like, I live within my means. I'm careful. So, but, I mean... I have like some trauma going on from years ago when I struggled to pay bills. So these things carry through in ways we don't even notice and affect us daily. So 
there are ways to overcome anxiety. I'm going to give you three examples, three methods you can use just to help out to overcome the small day-to-day -day anxiety, such as I would feel over opening a piece of mail or a bill. Okay. So challenge the catastrophic thinking. So this is thinking of the, the worst things that can happen. If, if I go on this vacation alone, this could happen. I could end up in trouble with the law by accident and I won't have the money to pay for a lawyer and I won't have this and what'll, what'll I do and this and that. So you need to, it, it's this kind of like anxiety that will ruin your ability to be free and make choices and take chances and really live your life to the fullest extent, right? So you want to challenge that. So analyze anxious thoughts and question their validity. Consider alternatives and more realistic out outcomes to counteract catastrophic scenarios. So what you want to do is look at the realist re reality of that. Like, what are the chances I'm going to get in trouble with the law? And what are the chances that realistically, if you want to challenge that, I'm going to not be able to identify where I can find my embassy if I'm out traveling alone somewhere? Or if I'm opening a piece of mail, my catastrophic thinking, what if the bill is way higher than it's supposed to be? and it's not what I budgeted for. Oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna pick up the phone and call the company and I'm going to find out why my bill is extra high and I'm going to make a payment arrangement with them. It's not the end of days. There's always solutions, but I have to cat like I have to address and analyze the, the catastrophic thinking and consider the more realistic outcome that my bill's actually gonna be what it's supposed to be. And if it's a couple dollars off here or there, it might be, but my bill's gonna be what it's supposed to be because it's the same every month and it has been for the last five years and it is what it is, it's my bill, right? So the second step is to focus on solutions instead of dwelling on the problem. So shift your mindset to problem solving. Identify actionable steps and address concerns. Empower yourself to take control. So that's my, my point about like, if my bill's bigger than it's supposed to be, what'll I do? I'll call the company. What if the company says, well, this was a phone bill and you went over your data, which is impossible since we have unlimited data these days, but, or I called another country by accident and I left it in my pocket on pocket dial and we talked for an hour or we didn't, whatever. Um, then I am going to go through all my expenses for the month. And if I can't make a payment plan, which I'll try to do first, I'll make a payment plan. That'll be my first step in analyzing steps and progression to move forward. If I can't do that, then I'm going to look at all my nice to haves for the month and I won't cut out my need to haves, but my nice to haves. And this month I'll have to reduce my nice to haves to cover that bill. And in turn, my credit won't be affected. I'll pay my bill and there's a solution and I don't feel anxiety about opening that mail because if for any reason that bill is catastrophically high, then I've got a couple plans. I've got a couple backup plans here and break down the anxious thoughts. This is the third tip by asking yourself if they're based on facts or assumptions. This is important. And because people with anxiety and that tend to let anxiety get in the way of things will assume these, those anxious ideas are going to be the outcome. They don't think of the positive potential. They think of the anxious potential. Analyze the evidence and consider the alternative perspectives, fo fostering a more logical and balanced understanding of the situation. So you will, you want to look at what's causing the anxiety and what think of why you're projecting that and assuming that the worst outcome is going to happen as opposed to the normal outcome and think logically and think of the steps you can take to make the logical, more normal, realistic outcome be the outcome that actually occurs and that you experience as opposed to the catastrophic outcome that you're afraid of and that your body is trying to protect you from, which is keeping you frozen in your spot in life and and making it so you're not enabled to be free and to make decisions and to take chances and move forward. So guys, I hope this was helpful. I know this was a quick video, but um, it's been on my mind a little bit because I look at mail. I thought of it yesterday because I come home and I look at my in car insurance bill and I know it's the same as it is every month and I know I have the money to pay it. And I know I like I get paid every two weeks. It is what it is. I'm going to pay my bills, but I still come in. I see that envelope on my desk and like, I, I feel it in my stomach and I was like, why do I still feel this way? Like it's been like 25 years since I've worried about bills. Like I'm, 
and careful. And that's not to say that's everyone's situation. Sometimes, and, and there's been times where I've been tighter for money, expenses, things have come up that are not expected. And I have been tight for money and I have worried about bills since then. But it's not the, the routine, it's the exception. And I have to think logically and think these times are gonna be the exception. And if the exception occurs, I make a plan ahead of time. And I plan, if the exception occurs, this is what I'm gonna do. And I do that before I even think about opening that bill so that when I sit down to open it, I'm prepared for anything. And you know what? Nine times out of 10, my bill is exactly what it's supposed to be. And then I smile, take a deep breath, sick, put it, sickness in the pit of my stomach goes away and it's gone. But I have to think through the steps logically before I address that behavior that's going to cause me anxiety, which is opening the mail. And it allows me to open the mail and not be frozen and not to stand still and not move. Because the alternative is not opening it, not paying my bill on time, not picking up the phone and answering an important phone call, not going out because I'm nervous, not taking a vacation, missing an opportunity of a lifetime because I'm scared to travel alone. The alternative is freezing in life and not moving forward. So guys, don't let your anxiety get you. And again, counseling is always the very best thing to help with any of these problems, whether they're big or small. BetterHelp is a really excellent way to get um, to have access to counseling. And of course, my videos aren't sponsored, but I just bring up BetterHelp because it's so accessible. You can text, you can do it by video call. You can call anytime, day or night. Your counselor's available to you. There's no like schedule your appointment. Anytime you need them, they're there. If you don't like them, it's like dating. You can find a new one without having to face them and say, I'm not happy with you. I need to find a new, a new psychiatrist or a new counselor, right? You can... You can just call in and they do the work for you. They'll find you someone new. And if you don't like that person and they're not a good fit, they'll find you someone new again. And you know what? If you're going to invest any money in anything, invest in yourself, whether it be your physical self or your emotional self, your academic intellectual self, always invest in yourself first and you'll always have a really great outcome and you will grow from it and balance and your body your mind your soul everything will become more balanced when you invest in yourself and counseling i believe is like the biggest invest in yourself investment in yourself anyone can make so that's my video i hope you guys have a fabulous saturday morning and it's the weekend so you're gonna hear from me a lot i love it I'll see you guys soon. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Give me your criticisms. Give me your comments. If you have experience with any of this, you got any more tips and anything you want to share, get it off your chest. Share it with me. Drop it in the chat and uh, or in the comment section. I read everything. I reply to everything. And don't be afraid to criticize me because I love criticism. Cr criticism, it makes me better. And it uh, makes me better at what I do and also teaches me a lot. It gives me alternative perspectives, sometimes that I haven't read or studied or that I haven't thought of and you know you learn and grow from everything so I appreciate it all have a great day guys and I will see you soon